I have the deep pleasure of now please inviting Mr. Amitabh Khan, India's G20 Sherpa, in this critical year. So. Yes, uh, my fellow panelists, Ashley, Mr. Sunil Mittal, Sachin, uh, all, all of them, and the vast audience here, uh, a very good morning to you. I'm uh, truly delighted to be here uh, as India's G20 Sherpa. Uh, India is taking over the presidency of G20 on the 1st of December. Uh, this is a moment when uh, the world is going through a lot of turmoil. There is a geopolitical crisis in Europe. Uh, we are facing a vast downturn as far as SDGs are concerned. 200 million people have gone below poverty line uh, in the post-COVID era. Close to about 100 million people have lost their jobs. So the sustainable development goals, uh, instead of progressing, have actually regressed. Uh, we are midway through that 2030 point. There is a huge crisis of global debt. Almost 70 countries in the world are facing a debt crisis. Uh, we have the challenge of a global supply chain which is disrupted. Uh, you have the challenge of climate action. But every, every crisis is also an opportunity. And to my mind, this is a huge opportunity for India. And uh, how we uh, make it very action-oriented, how we make it decisive, how we make it reform-oriented is what Prime Minister Mr. Naren Modi has talked about at length in Bali. But two things are very clear. One, that India would drive the digital transformation agenda, which I'll dwell on a little bit. Secondly, India will focus on women-led development and what uh, it implies as far as digital transformation is concerned. And therefore, uh, our ability to drive consensus was witnessed in the recently concluded Bali summit, where uh, we brought in a huge amount of consensus between both the developed and the developing world after a series of ministerial meetings had not worked all through. The Prime Minister's message of this era not being an era of war uh, and that this is an era of diplomacy and dialogue was critical as far as the entire statement was concerned. Uh, so India truly demonstrated its ability uh, to build in consensus and that to my mind would be critical all through the year as we uh, unroll the G20 presidency of India. Uh, to my mind, uh, there is no doubt that technology will be one of the digital transformation and the digital public infrastructure that India has built up will be a very critical issue because technology uh, can solve some of the most pressing challenges of the world uh, from accelerating the pace of SDGs and I Personally, I'm of the belief that it's not possible to lift vast segments of people above the poverty line without using technology and data for development in a very big way because that alone can deepen financial inclusion and can enhance agricultural yield. India is already a very undisputed leader in technology. We are in many ways the tech garage of the world. The world believes in our capabilities at a time when capital was fleeing countries across the world. India during the COVID period attracted vast amount of capital. And uh, this uh, was possible. This has been possible because we've done vast amount of digital transformation. Uh, we are the number one smartphone data consumer. We are the number one global fintech adopter. We have the second highest number of internet users. We have one of the cheapest mobile internet data rates in the world. And we have over a billion smartphones and we are now the world's third largest startup ecosystem. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, during the first two decades of the 21st century, actually uh, the Google, Amazon, Meta, Apple and Microsoft 
soft have all been at the uh, center and at the forefront of the massive explosion in innovation and value creation. They have billion strong users. Uh, they have a huge community. Uh, they have a market value of around seven trillion U US dollar. And they, along with the Chinese firms, Alibaba and Tencent, actually have dominated the global sphere in digital advertising, commerce, messaging, cloud infrastructure, social media, and mobile operating systems, amongst many others. In very sharp contrast to this, India has adopted a very unprecedented and a powerful new approach in policy governance through the adoption of digital public infrastructure. This has enabled India to digitally leapfrog in a very big way with the public sector playing a key role in defining the regulatory guardrails and the private sector innovating and competing in the marketplace. These public digital platforms are open source they have open APIs, they have open standards for interoperability, and leverage public data for open innovation models. These low-cost and inclusive platforms are based on the core principles of consent-based data sharing protocols, and they have sharply reduced the digital divide in India. They've also created a regulatory level playing field through regulatory framework. Tech innovations normally across history have emerged from the developed world. Digital public infrastructure is an area where an emerging market like India has created a unique model for the world converging both privacy and innovation. Today, in India, we have a basket of citizen services. You have this jam trinity, which links a billion plus biometrics with an equal number of bank accounts and mobile phones to drive financial inclusion. 400 million bank accounts have been created in the last seven years. During 2015 and 2018, 55% of the bank accounts opened across the world were opened in India. Every second bank account was opened in India. We have a digital tax system in the form of goods and services tax, an online retail platform in the form of GEM portal. The digital health, conditions, health uh, consultations occurs through e-Sanjeevni, and 500 million people greater than the population of European Union are covered through the Ayushman Bharat. The health insurance scheme is totally paperless, cashless, is digital. I can be living in Bihar, moving to Tamil Nadu, I'll carry my health insurance with me. A billion plus vaccinations were delivered through COVID and UPI, and these were, this has completely transformed the digital payments across the country. India was able to help 470 million, 470 million during the initial phase of the COVID-19, with all, all of them receiving benefits directly in their bank account, totally cashless and paperless. So the size and scale is been completely massive. Uh, 400 million new bank accounts created since 2015, uh, which is like equivalent to the population of USA. Uh, it is twice the population of Russia. We've recorded in 2021 48.6 billion transactions. Uh, this is 3x of what China does. This is 7x greater than the combined digital payments of US, Canada, UK, France, and Germany. Over 2 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses via digital seamless paperless platform is equivalent to six times the population of the United States of America. It is five times the population of the European Union and 2.5 times the population of EU and USA combined. Today, the world if you look around the world, there are 4 billion people, 4 billion people who do not have a digital identity across the world. There are 2 billion people who remain unbanked, and there are over 133 countries which have no digital payment system. This is a huge opportunity. This is a huge opportunity, and none of these countries and none of these 4 billion people can be lifted above the poverty line unless we don't use digital transformation. So ladies and gentlemen, our platform uh, 
in India create a very powerful integrated stack of building blocks that provide impetus to private sector innovation. They are built to scale. They serve over a billion people in 22 languages. Uh, a recent study by the Bank of International Settlements has highlighted that on account of the digital public infrastructure that India has built, India has delivered in seven years would have, what would have taken 46 years to achieve. So seven years, India has delivered what would have taken 46 years to achieve. Now this, to my mind, is what needs to be done in many other countries. All these platforms have been developed by building an alternative models on principles of openness, equity, inclusivity, fairness, transparency, and trust. And in future, to my mind, this new approach will create a new economic divide between countries who are leapfrogging ahead with digital public infrastructure, which India has developed, versus the rest of the world. Uh, the unified public interface in India has gone beyond just being a transformational idea to being a very, very successful case of witness, witnessing exponential growth. The brilliance of UPI lies in the enabling architecture built as a public good. Inherent to the architecture is interoperability, which I talked about, and today UPI ensures nearly six billion, six billion monthly transactions valued over 121.3 billion US dollar with 260 million users and a merchant base of over 50 million users. Already merchants in 10 countries accept UPI payments and now over 20 countries, over 30 countries actually, have expressed interest in adopting UPI. Now, as a result of the Jam Trinity, every household now has access to formal banking services, along with a plethora and a, a, of availing credit, insurance, pension schemes. And this India stack with its APIs, such as Aadhaar Authentication, EKYC, and eSign has led to this. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we started the UPI uh, in 2015, when the scheme started, only uh, the Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, we opened up the bank accounts. Only 19% of the accounts were operated by women. Just 19%. The latest data which has come in during the last eight years, 460 million accounts were opened. 56% 56, 56 of these accounts were women-led. And therefore, from 19%, we moved to 46%. The average deposit per account has gone up by 71%. The transformation has been possible only due to the digital public infrastructure. All this has been possible because of the private sector innovation in many ways. Sunil Mittal is sitting here. He has driven this huge innovation in the marketplace. He's competed with Jio in the marketplace. Jio and Airtel have competed in the marketplace. And therefore, this platform approach has actually led to a huge number of innovation by the private sector. Today, there are 30 apps, 30 different apps competing in the marketplace. Apps like Phone Pay, Jeep, Google Pay, Amazon Pay are all facilitating payments with the click of a billion. You know, just a one button click and there you are. Now, after this payment system, the focus shifted from payment to consumer and MSME lending. So you have paperless, cashless based, you know, lending innovation was done by a range of startups, Lending Cart, Pine Labs, Mobiquick. All of them have done paperless, cashless lending. Then there was increased focus towards personal finances, money management, investments, trading, and a plethora of top-class startups came up. Zeroda, Grow, Upstock. Now we are witnessing emergence of financial products which target more complex segments. Companies such as Digit and Aco are greatly simplifying insurance, covering end-to-end -end cycle of origination, claims, and selection. I worked in the fishery sector of Kerala, opening a bank account. My job was to transform the lives of traditional fishermen. I could give them outboard motors, I could give them crafts, I could give them fishing nets to go much further into the sea. Opening their bank accounts was the biggest nightmare for me. 
it used to take me eight to nine months to open a bank account. From that journey, I've seen bank accounts being opened in less than a minute for them. And therefore, this has been the transformational journey. My own insurance scheme would take months together. Today, we open insurance schemes in less than three minutes, all through this young startups who've transformed India. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, as India takes over the presidency of G G20, it has a unique opportunity to create a complete package of these digital platforms and deliver them end to end as an e-governance service to digitally transform the world. All this, to my mind, in a cloud in a box. We are not looking at infrastructure building in any country, which others have done. We are looking at all putting all this in a cloud in a box. There's no better way to enhance India's soft power. Therefore, at G20, we'll all work with countries towards and in partnership with them towards promoting digital public infrastructure so that we can deepen financial inclusion, we can improve efficiency of service delivery, we can lead to better women's growth, we can solve challenges of the world by leveraging technology. There is no doubt in my mind that India's tech enabled digital public infrastructure model driven by many of our dynamic entrepreneurs is the very best in the world. Now we must work with countries across the world to help drive digital inclusion at an unprecedented global space because we believe in one earth, one family, one future. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.